Hello, I am Dr. Kathleen Hall, and this is The Way I See It. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about how changing your perception, not can, but will change your life. I had a great heartwarming experience this last weekend. We rented a cottage at Callaway Gardens for the weekend to go to horseback riding. We were in the horse business for, well, right about 35 years, and I miss my horses more than I could say. And I think I'm going through nature deficit disorder because we also lived on the farm in the woods for 35 years, and we moved back to the city, and whew, it's been rough. So we go down to Callaway Gardens, which is just an hour, hour and a half south of Atlanta, about every few, you know, month, every six weeks, and get a cottage, ride horses. It's absolutely amazing. So um, we go to a place called Roosevelt Stables, which if you're around here or visit down in this area, it's absolutely amazing. The people are wonderful. But um, the manager of the horse farm and I went on a long ride. I took four to six hour rides uh, both days in a row because I obviously just can't get enough of it. And it's really beautiful. You ride through the National Forest, so you see deer, and I, I can't even tell you all the wildlife and and the wind blowing through the trees. And uh, it's named after Franklin Delano Roosevelt because he stayed in Warm Springs. When he had polio, he came down here. He heard about the Warm Springs that were very healing. And so this kind of became his second home uh, all the way until he died. He actually died down here in what we call the Little White House. So if you ever get a chance and you're down here in Georgia, please, please, please go visit uh, the Little White House in Warm Springs and visit Callaway Gardens. It's absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, um, the manager of the horse farm and I went for a long, long ride. And during the ride, you can imagine, in that long of a ride, you share a lot of stories. You, you've got the horse oh, going slow, moving through the woods. And, you know, you've got the wind. You've got, oh, it's gorgeous. The great trees are blowing. And you just, you're, you're so relaxed, you tell the intimate secrets of your life. So um, Susan, who was with me on the ride, was bothered by something that had happened to her at the university she's attending uh, the week before. So she asked if she could share something that was bothering her. I said, sure, absolutely. So Shelby's about 30 years old and the mother of two. And um, in her class that she was taking, most of them were 18 to 20 year olds. She was by far, she said, the oldest person in her class at the university. And she was in a mandatory class that has to be taken before you graduate from this university. And the class was called Perception. I like it. And so she said she's a science major. She's a biology major. So she griped and complained and said how she hated taking this ridiculous class. It was a total waste of time for a biology major. And she was pretty hot that she had to take the course. This is her telling me this. But she said after she got into this course called Perception, it changed her life. She said it was maybe one of the greatest life-changing events that she's ever done, ever experienced in her life besides having children. Well, that got me hooked right there. I went, what? What, what class? Because, you know, I happen to be a professor. Um, you know, I taught some at Emory. I taught at Piedmont College and all this other stuff. So I went, oh, my God, this is fascinating. So um, before we talk about a little about what happened, I thought I'd want to talk about perception for a moment to make sure we're on the same page. Just remember, your perception of situations is what actually constitutes your reality. So if you perceive that it was a cloudy day, you're going to say, oh, today was a cloudy day. And then somebody else may say, it was really sunny. There were just a few scattered clouds. Do you see? Or um, the color of a car and somebody goes, wow, did you see that bright blue car? And somebody goes, no, it was kind of a sky blue. So remember your perception, your individual perception of any situation is what constitutes your reality. Life is simply what it is when you see that. Okay. So things happen beyond your control, but how you respond to life experiences and what you choose to do with these experiences depends entirely on your personal interpretations or perceptions that you give of these experiences, okay? So that is the basic premise of what perception is. So back to Susan's story. So the professor in this perception class 
um, ask all 40 students, what good positive thing or experience happened to you this last week? So the professor went around the room and asked each student for the answer to the question. Susan said she was shocked when she heard these young people's response. In total, I mean, you're not, you may not believe this, I was shocked. 75% of the students said nothing positive happened to them in the last week. 75%. I, I was like sucker punched. I went, what? What? How, how is that possible? I mean, unless you're n numb or whether you're, I don't know, online, uh, uh, YouTubing uh, uh, and waiting for some great experience or the Red Sea parting or I don't know. Uh, uh, an asteroid to land. So anyway, I was shocked. 75% said that nothing positive had happened to them in the last uh, week. The second question the professor asked the students was this. When and where did someone show you kindness in the last week? Hmm. Susan again said she was shocked. 65% of the students said no one showed them kindness in the last week. I went, what? you got to be kidding me. What? I, 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 so I, I'm like, the second question shocked me as much as the first. And then finally, the professor asked the students in this class, when did you show kindness to someone in the last week? When did you show kindness? 80% said they showed no acts of kindness in the last week to anyone. Seriously? For real? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, these three questions, I, I just was haunted by them. Then the professor went through the questions to take a deeper dive into the questions. So she said, happiness in the last week? Let's talk about this. Did you drink a great cup of coffee? Did you eat a yummy meal? Did you wear a shirt or a dress you loved? Did you pet your dog or your cat? She was, of course, showing them happiness is here and now in the everyday moments of life. But it's so interesting. They expected happiness in big moments. You know, that what it, it would have been so interesting to be a fly on the wall and delve deeply into this, isn't this? I think it's fascinating. On the question about kindness, she said, didn't anyone let you in line at the grocery store or in traffic? Or didn't somebody smile at you? Or did, did somebody, even at Target, say, hey, how are you today? Or the clerk smiled at you or said, can I help you? So then the professor asked, how could you? How could you be the beginning? How could you practice more kindness and happiness in the world? So anyway, I was so disturbed by these young folks to the professor's question. I was asking myself, what is going on in this world? Are we getting numb? Are we living in a blur these days, not noticing joy and happiness in the tiny moments of life? Are we so aware of... of, of are, are we unaware, excuse me, are we so unaware that we're not being kinder to each other? Why aren't we noticing that? What, what's going on? I mean, it was literally mind-boggling. So that's why I wanted to talk about it today. Um, and again, um, you know, I was founder of the Mindful Living Network, Mindful Living, which is why this concerned me, obviously, 20 years ago, that we must cultivate awareness whether it's the climate changing or someone not making eye contact because they're depressed and, or, or anything, that it's the only thing that's going to save us and save the world. So anyway, I was disturbed, drove home from Callaway, and I remembered and recalled something I want to share with you today. In 2009, I was staying at the peninsula in Beverly Hills, and I was crossing the street uh, about to sign a big contract for a TV show I'd written. And uh, out of the clear blue, of course, I don't remember any of it, but I was hit by a large car going about 60 miles an hour, 55, something like that. They were, had been kind of racing, and this was in Beverly Hills. So they hit me. I was actually dead for about five minutes in the middle of Santa Monica Boulevard and uh, Rodeo Drive. So um, the next thing I remember, because I still, of course, to this day, that was... 2009, I still don't remember one thing about it. Um, I was at Cedar sinai Hospital and uh, was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. Uh, I was there for a while. They flew me back to Atlanta. And so the months that uh, happened after that, I had a 
you know, brain lesions, seizures, depression. It was, it was a spiraling. Uh, my hip, my right hip was like smashed so I could hardly walk. Anyway, it was uh, uh, beyond a horrible, horrible situation. No memory. Anyway, it was horrible. So um, me being the person that I am, uh, uh, active, uh, love life, ride horses, write books, do whatever, I thought, why should I live? I mean, and remember, I was significantly depressed and had a brain injury. So I didn't want my husband or my daughter or any of them to have to put up with, um, you know, me, what was left of me. So I'll never forget this. It was raining, and the corner of Far Road and Peachtree in Atlanta and Buckhead's pretty busy. So I decided to go down there. I'll never forget the day. It was raining. There was rain dripping down off my face. And so what I decided to do was wait on that corner, and I was going to wait for a bus or a big truck going pretty fast so that I could go ahead and take myself out. Uh, and so I was pretty um, significantly flat, to say the least. So I'm standing there on the curb, rain, everything else, trying to get the nerve, and all of a sudden somebody touched me on my shoulder, my left shoulder, I'll never forget it. And I slowly turned around and there was a young, probably 18-year-old black man, young black boy, adorable. And he whispers, are you all right? And I just stood there in silence. Um, he said, are you all right? And I was dumbfounded, so I didn't say a word. I was staring. So he took my hand, took my left hand, I'll never forget it. And he said, why don't we go down and get a cup of coffee at McDonald's? And so... I just looked at him and tears streamed down my face. Just, I started crying. I hugged him. And um, I thought he was an angel. I swear to God, to this day. And so we walked um, down there and we stayed for a couple hours at McDonald's, had coffee. Um, and it, it was amazing, I, I swear. I, I can't believe it happened. And so later he walked me back to my condominium and gave me a hug. And he left for his job. And of course... He was, like he said when he left, I'm so late for work. I hope I don't get fired. So, and again, to this day, I still swear it was an angel. And I will never forget looking out my condominium window and watching, because our condominium was right there uh, near Far Road and Peachtree. I watched him get into an old Renault, if you guys, anybody remembers those. It was pink. Four bald tires, had nothing, and here this. And so what he told me at McDonald's, too. He said, you know, I went by, and I saw you standing there. And he said, and I was late for work. And I thought, something's not right. He said, so I went down to the bank on Peachtree. I made a U-turn in the parking lot, came back, and I looked at you again. He said, I went down to McDonald's, and I turned around in the parking lot there. And he said, then I came back and looked at you. And I went, you know, God, I think she's going to do something terrible. So I got to do something. So he said he turned around and parked his little car, his little, you know, previously red, now pink, um, stained from the weather car, jumped out and saved my life because he noticed me, because he was aware, he was kind. I mean, so I just don't know his name. I don't know how to find him or anything except his act of kindness literally saved my life. So today, I am asking you to choose to do at least one. And you'll get an addict. You'll be an addict like I am about acts of kindness. So one or more a day. Just, just try it. Intentionally try it. Don't just wait for it to happen. And I promise you it'll change your life. You will become so different, and it will become a spiritual practice you're going to love. It'll also transform those around you, your family, your friends, as they witness the power of your own kindness. And you never know. You may even save somebody else's life. Because since that man saved my life, I've had a whole magical life of love and adventure and things I never dreamed possible would happen. Never in my life dreamed possible if it wouldn't have been for that wonderful child, young man who saved my life. So you, you, you never know. You may even save someone's life, maybe your own. So remember, when you change your perception, you will change your life. 
And so what I'm going to ask you today is please join us at the Mindful Living Network. We are hoping and praying and trying to create a more mindful world. Uh, visit our meditation room. We've created these from scratch, Andrea and I, and they're wonderful and beautiful. They're of nature, of birds, of rain, of you name it. It's beautiful. So it's called the Meditation Room at the Mindful Living Network. And we have an incredible, we just have tons of choices of relaxation videos. We're also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, which is X, or YouTube. Our YouTube channel is fabulous. It's got our reality show. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And let us hear from you. If you have an idea for a podcast or you uh, want to tell us something, give us some advice, please. We need all the help we can get. Contact us at MindfulLivingNetwork.com on our website. And I am Dr. Kathleen Hall. This is The Way I See It. And thank you for the privilege of your time.